three, two, one. And Maybe there I it is. All right, so we are live now. We are recording. <laughs> so Jay Harry up and threw down his chips. <laughs> Eat your chips, man. Yeah, you did. Eat your breakfast. Eat your chips. Okay, because my cat just stuffed her whole paw. I'm sure. <laughs> my cat said, "You're not gonna eat it. I'm gonna." Eat it. Yeah, if you're not gonna eat it, I'm gonna. Eat it. All right. So, um, the movie selection today is um, *Lethal Weapon*. Um, Mel Gibson, Danny Glover, of course. Um, I couldn't stop with just one. I I couldn't just watch one. I had to watch the whole franchise all the way through to the end. And then um, uh, one thing that stood out was the uh, scene on the beach in part two, in Lethal Weapon 2, where um, his mobile home gets shot up, um, you know, with the helicopters on the beach. And then uh, it made me think of... Um, Loaded Weapon with uh, Emilia Estevez and Samuel Jackson. And then I had to go watch that movie and watch for the cameo of Bruce Willis when they, you know, the helicopters come in and shoot up his mobile home and he does the whole, you know, wrong address. Yeah, 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 it's okay. (laughs) No problem. Yeah. And I I went down a rabbit hole and I just, you know, from there. Yeah. And then I had to reel it back in, but I, I watched the whole franchise and, um, you know, it was, it was awesome. It was awesome. You know, just even the the entire franchise captured what the first movie was trying to do, which was um, they created a, a family. You know, in the first movie with you know with the partnership um, between uh, you know, uh, Danny Glover's character and Mel Gibson's uh, character um, was that they uh, they kind of needed each other. You know, I I, I don't want to say that. Um, Danny Glover was um, kind of like he not not to, please don't get me wrong he didn't regret his family but I really felt like he fell into a rut where his routine was just you know a normal routine and he was okay with it and Mel Gibson came along and kind of and kind of woke him up you know because you see the characters finishing each other's lines later you know they got this awesome connection and um you know it's it it, that partnership um was awesome because it it really it really does turn into this family moment the second his daughter is put into danger and he goes you know are you crazy are you really that good you know and and mel gibson's just like you know like let's do it it's showtime I'm going to show you what I got. And then in that, that bond is formed. And, um, you know, you could, s- you, s- you see it progressing through the movie. And then as soon as it clicks, the two of them are just awesome throughout the entire franchise. So I really like this movie. I really did. I really liked how it was put together. I really liked their, um, uh, the action scenes, you know, everything that was happening, even though it was completely unbelievable for the real world. Uh, but... <laughs> I don't know. You know, there might be somebody out there. Uh, I mean... You got some G.I. Jays, you G.I. Joes out there. Somewhere. And it's hiding. <laughs> yeah. I think that when you think about their connection... For me, when I felt like they were like bonding was when he he was at his house and he had dinner at his house, right? And then they go outside and he's like, well, what did you learn? (laughs) He's like, I learned this and I learned that. (laughs) And then when they kind of look at each other, you know, you got Riggs over here by the truck and then Murtaugh is over here by the garage and you know that whole pick up the hood uh, the 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 top of the ga- the trash. Gosh, I can't speak today. So <laughs> the top of the trash, and it kind of like rebounds off of it into the trash. I was like, for me, that was kind of like seal of the deal. You know, like yeah. I can't get rid of you, and I can't get rid of you, and you're okay. <laughs> yeah. 
You know how guys do. And you know, to me, the the cooking the cooking line. He goes, <laughs> "Hey, did you really like my wife's cooking?" He's just like, "No." <laughs> <laughs> And it's like, okay, okay, I like you. I like you. <laughs> we, we can be friends. <laughs> it's like at the range when he's like, and he's like, um, something about his cooking that he's like, yeah, no wonder you're so skinny. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> or it's no wonder you're so skinny. There you go. That will not get you invited to Christmas dinner. Yeah, the pretty eels. <laughs> Yeah, or, you know, this, this, and this happy goes, yeah, but, you know, that just sounds pretty thin. And he goes, you know, with your wife's cooking, yeah. I'm not sorry. It's my middle name. It's my middle name. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Did anybody notice how often Murdoch's hair, his grades changed? Murdoch. Um, Murdoch, I mean, Murdoch, yeah, um, um, yeah. you know who I'm talking about. Murtaugh. What's his name? Murtaugh. Murtaugh. Yes. <laughs> I was like, wait a minute, who's that? <laughs> <laughs> it's a new character, you see him? Uh, well, I, I want he was to off to the side. <laughs> one tidbit to keep in mind, though, uh, Mel Gibson and Dick Lover in these roles weren't the ages of the role. Oh, I know. Yeah. I know. Yeah. I know. So, I'm going to talk about special effects. So what... Uh, Glover's grays, yeah. Some of them, I don't know. Some scenes, he some scenes the powder was too heavy, and then yeah, some scenes yeah. powder wasn't enough. <laughs> yeah, I, I agree. I did notice that, but you know, you just kind of dismiss it because Danny Glover's character, you already establish he's he's fifty, which is not old, but you establish he's aging, right? Yeah. And so I kind of just said, okay, he's the older one, and Riggs is the younger one. So you kind of just, you know, but I did notice that. It did seem a little inconsistent, you know, some of those things. But, yeah. Jay, you got anything to say? No. <laughs> Over there, so proper. I'm like, I love Jay. Jay's just like, when he wrote that message, I'm just like, oh, you want to take my classes for me? <laughs> Thank you. Um, I feel like um, I had a different connecting moment. Maybe. I feel like um, the scene when um, you held Cap and um, um, Ray, Martin Ray, he breaks free and just saves them. Um, uh, he is being tortured and his daughter is being so they're trying to get him to talk. I feel like after um, Ray saved them, there was almost respect, respect built. Because you saved my child in a way. That was the scene. So you think that was when they connected then? Yeah. Man, yeah. I, I think for me, uh, the moment was when, um, now it's, it's going to sound horrible to say it this way, but at the end, when uh, when Riggs uh, goes over and he gives the, the bullet, the gift to Rianne, mm -hmm. And he tells her, he's like, just give it, you know, give it to your dad. He'll know what it means. And she's like, you don't want to come in? And he's like, no, no. He's like, I got to go. And it was like that moment when when Murtaugh comes out and says, if you think I'm going to eat the worst. <laughs> <laughs> By myself. <laughs> he's like, the worst turkey, you got to be crazy, right? Yeah. <laughs> he's like, he's like, he's like, I'm not crazy. I got a secret for you. I'm not crazy, right? And I think that moment right there. That's what solidified that from that moment they are partnered through and through. Okay. They just they just went through some serious stuff. Yeah. Right. And you know, Murtaugh, you know, he's trusting his family, he's trusting his daughter, you know, uh, his life. And and Riggs had nothing to live for. Right? You saw those moments when it's he like Murtaugh, his... Yeah. Murtaugh came at the right time in his life to save Riggs. And yeah. Riggs came at the right time for Murtaugh to kind of take him out of, like you said, Rob, that he was kind of like in that mundane, you know, go to work, do your routine, yeah. wait for retirement. But Riggs comes along and kind of revitalized him. So they, they met at a time when they needed it the most. And yeah. that, that that ending was like perfect when, 
When he gave that bullet and he came in, he says, can I invite someone? And the dog comes running out. <laughs> yeah. And that moment when the dog chases the cat through the house, hear everybody screaming. Burbank. I thought it was like the rest of the movie, I was like, two, three, and four is like embodies that, right? Like, yeah. That's going to be chaos. Just chaos. Family, but it's going to be chaos. It's like, now. you are now officially a family. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, you know, um, you know, thinking about it, uh, I can't. I can't help but wonder if maybe the gray hair changing throughout the movie was an Easter egg. What if it was a, an Easter egg that you know we just thought for, as it being an inconsistency? What if the Easter egg was this? Um, you know, the, the changing the gray hair throughout the movie was kind of their way of saying, like you said, um, Riggs revitalizing Murtaugh. In, in in a Peter Pan effect, like the, um, Robin Williams in Hook. Oh, okay. I don't know because I, I get what you're saying, and I like that. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but there are scenes when they're together, and it's like heavy, and then there are scenes together when it's like just on the edge, and I'm sitting here seeing him sweating, and I'm like, did he sweat it out? So I'm like, I don't know. I like your theory. I want to believe in it, but I'm like, yeah, no, because there were too many instances where it was like, mm, you know what? I, I'm just, I'm just hitting my thirties, so I'm gonna. <laughs> Every everybody laughed at that one. I know, right? <laughs> You're hitting your butt. <laughs> <clears throat> <clears throat> Yeah, yeah, and I'm you know I'm getting grays right, and I do have I do have these times where I embrace it, I embrace the gray, right? Um, because if I do shave and I look too young, I I get disrespected when I'm out. It's just like you know, oh youngin, I'm like hold on, man, my 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 kids are like really about to hit their thirties. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> yeah, like, I'm I'm older than you think, and I and I hate that young and thing. And then and then there's times where I don't embrace the gray, and you know I want to I want to shave it off, and I, I I feel younger and vibrant, and I want to you know that lively step kind of thing. So I mean, I don't know. It could. It could it could be it could be either way. Like, you know, it could be an Easter egg. It could be an Easter egg, you know. Or it could literally just be a mistake from the eighties. <laughs> well, um, just looking at some of the uh the playback, I was just scanning through the movie and there's a lot of scenes where there's water involved. Like the yeah. swimming pool, there's rain, there's sweat. So it could just be a mistake, right? Like yeah, he put on yeah. he put on the powder to make him look gray, and then yeah. they have a no, they dump in the because when pool. he's talking at some point inside a building, it's like, "Where's your gray?" <laughs> yeah, I want to I want to go with you guys, but I can't. that's that's okay. That's okay. I'm so focused on that gray. It was, that's all right. It was just like it was like high. Okay, so you you I, gave your you gave your opinion, and now just don't say anything else for the rest of the. The review, okay, and now. we're gonna and we're gonna go with my theory of being the Peter okay. Pan. <laughs> yeah. Fine, fine, Captain Hook. Go <laughs> <laughs> the only thing that I thought was the Easter egg was the Lost Boys. Yeah, yeah, Lost Boys was at the playing at the theater, right in the background. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, but wait. So, okay. Do you remember when they changed after going to the swimming pool? Do you remember when they changed clothes? Or <clears throat> I'm just gonna say Roger because I can't remember. So it's like, okay, oh, Roger. Roger. Yeah, it's had Roger. His, had the maroon top on and the sweatpants. Yeah. So he had to purposely pull that jacket for whatever reason. That patch. I'm like, I don't even know what that patch is, but I want to know what that patch is because he purposely had the show it from the way he was posed. The patch? What patch? On the sweatpants. Okay, where is it? 
it's it's the scene after they shoot the guy in the in the pool and they put their and clothes in the dryer and um Riggs is sitting on the bed and he brings him his clothes and then Riggs gets up and he's putting on his pants and Roger's sitting there by the TV and he pulls the jacket back and he stands there he kind of shifts a little bit and he says yeah. I'm like are you posing for that patch like what is that patch oh yeah, I see the pat talked about. But uh, you see how he moved? His jacket was down. Like, he didn't have to move his jacket. But he stands there and he kind of shifts just one extra time. And it's like, what are you doing? Well, I, I think, I think um, just watching back the scene, I think he was just um, kind of like maybe grabbing his pants to make sure they were up kind of deal. You know, like. I didn't see him pulling up anything. <laughs> Well, he just pulls his hand back, but I mean that could have been that could be a nod to. Um, I mean, he is a police officer, so I don't know if that ties into some sort of. Uh, maybe I see red, white, and blue. So maybe it's in for. It was red, white, and was it blue or green? Uh, no, it looks like it's blue. It looks like it's red, white. Well, I mean, red, white, and green wouldn't make sense. I mean, well, I mean, it could make sense with whatever it means, but I mean, red, white, and blue. I don't know if that guy was Italian. You know, uh, yeah, I know red, white, and green probably be an Italian somewhere. Right? Uh, um, but is, um, I, but I mean, it's like you have so many things going on, like Pepsi and a sponsor. So I'm just like, who was that patch for? Were they a sponsor too? Well, you know, Alka Seltzer was a sponsor. Yes. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> and I started the singing the song. Did you start singing the song? Looking at the box, they, I think they had them drinking it. It's like. Wow, man, Elka Seltzer really wants to plug in this movie. <laughs> yeah, 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 I, I noticed that. Um, so, it brought back a lot of good memories. Yeah, yeah, it did. Yeah, it did. Um, uh, one, of the, one of the things that I did catch was uh, I was trying to get my uh, scene up here going, and for whatever reason, I can't get out of full screen. It's like I can't exit full screen mode. Oh. Um, does your does your little X not the X but the little square box next to your X when you hover over it does it bring you up like positions it just, you can it just took screen? yeah it just literally took a minute I guess because I got the two screens going um so it's you know not only were we having issues this morning with uh. Uh, Facebook, but I'm having issues with Plex right now. Um, but I was trying to bring up, um, I was trying to bring up that scene, and uh, I, I can't get it going. But um, uh, man, what was I? Uh oh, the old age kicking in. Yeah. <laughs> Um, 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 Do you remember the scene before it or after? No, I lost it. Parents. Oh, parents. Michael and Claire. Right? Okay. So you remember when he was in the trailer, right? And he was contemplating whether to shoot himself or not. Okay. Okay, you remember the little silver emblem on his on his weapon, right? Silver thing no? on his... No, what yeah, thing? Yeah, there's a little silver emblem on the handle. Where was it? Is it just um... the regular Beretta emblem? Because, you know, Beretta is... I, the... I couldn't tell because if it is, then yeah. You know, it's funny not to jump back on that symbol on, on Roger's pants, but the follow-up scene when he goes outside after the after I think he after he's done working on the boat, he his daughter runs and jumps on him, and he it's makes not there. he purposely makes an effort to pull her leg so you can see the symbol. <laughs> I'm like I'm not noticing that. I'm like wait a minute. <laughs> I was like <laughs> like he grabs her leg and he like he's holding her, but he pulls her leg back so you could clearly see. That there's a symbol on his sweatpants. So that's why I'm like, who is this? Okay. Guy? That's definitely a sponsor for sure. Yeah. Because you know the. Um...
Yeah. Yeah, this is what I was talking about. When they go to Dixie's house. Right? They go to Dixie's yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. When they go to Dixie's house, um uh Mel Gibson uh Riggs purposely right he purposely turns his arm so that way the kid can see the tattoo and it's it's almost like he he's forcing the kid to see the tattoo like it, it's not even a coincidence that the kid sees the tattoo it's it's more forced by his body language and i think that's um and I, and i'm not saying that to be like you know oh let's point out the bad acting you know, let's point out the fact that, you know, they did stuff like that where they, you know, purposely moved you into positions for advertising. But I think those are uh, one of the things that were kind of huge. And those were details that probably just really needed to be worked in. And um, they were specifically worked in. So yeah. Like, there was no bad acting. Yeah. Where nowadays you know you see movies are you know you're you're you know the part where they work in is more of a camera action and it's not really relied on the actors it's more of the camera you know the cameraman's job kind of thing but i think with uh riggs when he uh got there and he was like you said trying to force the the tattoo i kind of feel like he was but maybe not as forcefully because remember, he's got all this experience, special forces, you know, and then like he probably came over there by instinct and like, you know, let me let me see if it's who I think I think it may be. Because or was that was before they found out about the bomb, right? Uh, well, this was after they found out about the bomb. Okay, so let's make sure. So yeah, because when he was talking about it, no, this is this is not your average, you know, I'm just going to make a bomb guy. Well, so, and then when the kid was trying to describe him, and yeah. so I guess when he said blonde hair, maybe that's what made him go over there and show the tattoo. No, it's, it's, I'm looking at the scene. It's actually before the blonde hair part. Um, it's immediately it? after, it's immediately after the, um, go get me a paper and crayons. And he does the whole big bird thing. <laughs> yeah. Oh, big bird. <laughs> yeah. Well, watching it back, I would say that it probably, yeah, it does feel uh, a little forced, a little bit. But if you yeah. look at what Riggs was doing, like, you know, you have Murtaugh, he had his leg up on the, the fire truck, and he's talking to the kids. So Riggs is talking over his shoulder. He comes around to his right side to mm-hmm. talk to him. And I guess. Riggs leaning into him, you know, showing his arm, right? You know, that maybe was a little forced, but I think he was trying to talk to Roger and not, like, have the kid see him kind of deal. And I think that's why his arm faced the kid more. Didn't you know? he raise yeah. his little sleeves up a little bit before he came over there? Um, I don't think so. He has a really short, short sleeve shirt. No, because so. no, if he... When he walks away, when it's bunched up, and you see where the tattoo is, like on his bicep. Yeah, it's a little tucked. It's tucked. It's yeah, the tucked. shirt, the shirt is tucked. So yeah, the scene, the scene was forced a little bit. Um, yeah. You know where. But I don't know. Like his his shirt wasn't. If you look at the scene again, you'll see that his left shoulder, his left shoulder is partially tucked, almost as if you take off a jacket. And, you know, like, this kind of gets bunched up like that. Right? Yeah. So, it, could it have been rolled up purposely so he could see the tattoo? I'm sure it was. Could have been mm-hmm. Marine rolled, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. 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 You know how he did. I like the way the Marines did this. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, yeah. So, was his jacket, the jacket scene where he said your jacket was on fire, and he's like, what's the jacket, blah, 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 blah. You know, and... That makes you think that, okay, so they had to find a way to get him to take off his jacket. Right, right. So maybe that was thought out to make sure that the tattoo was visible. Because the tattoo actually, I think if I remember correctly, is pretty high in his arm. So Yeah. Yeah, know. that's why I said it. he had to have at least squished it up prior to coming over there because the little kid was like, it looks like that. 
Yeah. I remember. So yeah, there were there were only there were only a couple of scenes where you know it was forced like that, you know, with the in the advertising. Um but other than that, like I really I really felt like the movie flowed. You know, it had a nice flow to it, a nice consistency. There weren't too many huge gaps where I was left blank. Um, okay, after Murtaugh get uh, not Murtaugh, after Riggs gets uh, shot with the 12 gauge, it, it did kind of throw me off a little bit as to like, okay, um, what were you doing out there? Oh, yeah, they were questioning, you know, trying to find people in connection to Dixie. Um, you know, so he gets shot. And then if you're monitoring, you know, police radios and you're monitoring, you know, news, media information, and you're trying to get this information to, to make sure, that, you know, Riggs was shot and killed, it's like they didn't do the confirmation enough for me, enough for me. You know, for me, there just wasn't enough, like, you know, you know, of, of Murtaugh saying, you know, hey, my partner just got shot. You know what I mean? It was like, it, I think it left that window open later for the colonel to figure out, like, you know, eh, it's not really adding up. I think Riggs might still be alive. And then, therefore, during the um, hostage exchange scene, it really does allow for the colonel to catch Riggs out on the, on the you know, on the grassy knoll kind of thing. On the grassy knoll. <laughs> on the grassy knoll. You know what I mean? And it's, I, so it was like, as I was watching it, I was just like, oh, wait a minute. Dude, if, if they're trying to play this off, like Riggs just got shot, you know, there wasn't enough information there. And then you see the scene later where the colonel catches Riggs out on the, on the you know, out on that, uh, that dune. And you're like, ah, oh, maybe that's why. It's because they set it up, just like the fire jacket, you know, scene. They just set it up for the next thing to, to happen. It's like, okay, yeah, yeah, Officer Riggs was shot and killed tonight. Who is this? Oh, thank you. And it was just like, well, yeah, you confirmed it, but it really doesn't fit an officer getting shot and killed. So... I think that's what oh. kind of left the question mark for the colonel, maybe. Yeah. Maybe the colonel wasn't really a colonel. <laughs> well, maybe he was faking the fuck. Jay, what you got to say? Because I'm, you're just sitting there, honey. I'm, I want to hear words. Come on, Jay. That's all right. I take it out of his pay every time he, he just sits there <laughs> quietly. <laughs> Something that you're not going to see a parade. 
You're not going to see a news report. It's just one of those things that happen in the moment. They're calling, say, hey, we just heard about a shooting over the police scanner. You know, we want to just confirm an officer was shot. Yeah. You know? Right. It was now, just the way he gave that little smirk but, after he got off the phone with you. <laughs> but the fact that, uh, but the fact that he did, I mean, this probably wouldn't happen in real life. I mean, the, the captain going, uh, yeah, Sergeant, you know, uh, Riggs was, was shot and killed. Like, I don't know if they would disclose the name. They probably said, yes, we had a shooting of an officer. And then he probably would have left it at that. Yeah. But for the purposes of the, of the movie, it, it was just one of those moments that we need to make sure that the criminals think that yeah. he's dead. Right? Yeah. I think the... Don't, okay, well, don't you think they recognized each other before? What do you mean? Didn't they cross paths just before that? In the helicopter, that's about it. Yeah, he wouldn't have. I don't think he would have recognized him from that. Yeah. I don't know. Eagle eyes. Oh, maybe. I, don't know. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I thought he said something as they zoomed in on him when they were flying away. Like we might have another problem or something yeah, like that. He says, yeah, he says he he talked to the police. Yeah. And that's all he said. He didn't say who he talked. He said he he may have talked to the police, and he said. Um, did you uh, take care of it? And he says, no, Mr. you know, no, sir, I didn't have an opportunity to. Right. And he said, very disappointed, Joshua. Come home. It yeah. wasn't just the police, though, because they, they also said, uh, what was his name? The guy that they shot with the eggnog camera. That was uh, uh, Hunsucker. Yeah. So they were like, what did he say to him? So we got to get him, <laughs> catch him, which, you know, for Roger. So... <laughs> I don't know. That's where I think they had the bigger problem. But I'm trying to think. I'm wondering. They had to have at least seen. Like, okay, I'm, I watched this like half awake, half asleep. <laughs> so I'm like, the other things, other things I've caught, but I was like, wait a minute. <laughs> yeah. You remember when she fell from the balcony in the beginning? Yes. And I'm doing my job. <laughs> when she jumped or first when she walked up i guess it was it stairs like how it seemed like it was stairs she was walking up and i'm like but it's a railing where are you where are these stairs she had one shoe on and one shoe off well when she's falling and there's two things when she's falling and just as she hits the car you can see the wrinkles in the the fall mat for like when you do stunts. Yeah. For like a second. And then she's dead on the car and both her shoes are on. Yeah. Yeah. There 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 was I, I noticed that throughout the movie. There were a couple of um you know mistakes where, you know, the scene from one scene to the next scene, you know, things didn't really add up. Things were off just a slightly you know slightly a little bit and um you know but it was for me it was okay i was okay with it because of um because of the movie because the movie flowed and it kept you interested and it kept you engaged um i was okay with those mistakes it didn't take away from the experience when i was done watching this movie i caught one too uh, but it didn't take away from the movie, but it was, uh, you remember the part when, uh, Murta and Rick go into that, um, go into that store after he jumps off the building with that, uh, suicide guy. Yeah. Right. And, and, uh, Murta takes him into the room and says, get in here. We got to talk. And he starts talking to him. Right? <laughs> he asks him the question, do you, uh, you want to kill yourself? Right. So he takes his gun out and he says, here, take my gun, kill yourself. Right. And he puts it up to the side of his head, and remember, Murtaugh grabs it and says, "No, put it under your chin. That you know, you might it might go through your ear, right?" Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this, when he grabs the gun, he actually cocks the hammer and puts uh -huh. it under his chin. Uh -huh. But when they show him actually pull the the trigger, the hammer wasn't pulled because you see the hammer start pulling back. So that right. was a mistake because it's like, well, he already cocked the hammer. If he pulls the trigger now, that's it. Riggs is dead. But it's almost like they had to set up, you know, obviously for Riggs or for Murtaugh to stop the hammer from, you know, actually firing. <laughs> they had to, you know, 
you know. There's so many things with that gun. But, uh, yeah. When they went to Dixie's house before it blew up, his gun was not the same weapon. It wasn't the same weapon. It had a big, giant yellow band on it. I'm like, where was it? When they went to Dixie's house or when they went to the mansion, the dealer's house? No, when they went to Dixie's house, I'm like, it went, it, did he have it that way at the, at the, at the mansion? I don't think that's when I noticed it. Because I still swore it was a regular handle. It was all black oh, and big, no. a little symbol. I, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, it had a little yellow dot on the handle. No. Is that what you're talking about? On Riggs' gun? On Riggs' gun, it had that. It had a silver emblem. If you look at him when he's, you know, sad in the beginning in his trailer, playing with the weapon, and when he puts it down, it's in the same <laughs> position. That when you see that weapon later on, it's got this giant, it's like literally this wide going around the handle of the weapon. Oh, well, they do have a yellow dot on Riggs' weapon uh, when they're leaving Dixie's. It's at, um, it's at timestamp 5850. And I, I would only assume that that's probably a prop marker, right? To make sure that Riggs grabs the right gun, I guess, when... When they're going into scene, I, I, I don't know. I like how you call it a yellow, a little yellow dot. That's not little. <laughs> oh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> that's a long band. That's not a dot. Mm -hmm. Come on. <laughs> you, okay, look, maybe you should put your glasses on. I know you try to be fly and try to be young, but you put the glasses. On. Oh, oh, it, it's a slightly bigger dot. <laughs> <laughs> now it's. <laughs> Slightly bigger dot. That's, I, I can't. I'm done. I, I'm done. <laughs> okay, yeah. I'm I'm seeing I'm seeing a yellow dot. I'm not seeing a, a band around. Oh, okay. I'm about to pull it. I'm, I can't even. My uh, it, yeah, there. it's right at it's right at like oh. fifty eight. You know and, what I noticed? Now you got me looking for this. Now I noticed something else too. The bullet he uses in the beginning of the movie, where that scene where he's thinking about shooting himself. Yeah. Not hollow boy. That's not a hollow tip bullet. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I was like, because when he said it later, I was like, you do? <laughs> I was like, wait a minute. Yeah. What's going on here? That's it. I'm changing my review score. <laughs> That's it. It's done. With the weapon just lost. Oh, I can't. But, you know, like, like I said, no matter what, even with all the inconsistencies throughout the movie, even with all the you know movie mistakes that happened throughout the movie, um, it 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 wasn't strong enough to pull away from, um, you know, to pull away from the movie, and it wasn't enough to distract me, and and for me to start saying you know oh my god that's terrible or oh my god the makeup is so terrible all oh, the yeah, all the special effects are so terrible. It didn't. It didn't pull me away from. <laughs> it didn't pull me away from the movie, and I was still engaged, and I was I was still intrigued and still into it, which to me was a good thing. So. I'm gonna hate my job. Apparently, this, this is gonna be... <laughs> I'm gonna hate my job. Like, oh, you know. It's not terrible. I didn't say it was terrible. <laughs> you told me point out details, and I was like, "Oh yeah, there was this." <laughs> oh yeah, well, yeah. Right you know, which there were, there were, there were plenty. There were plenty throughout you the movie. Me, you made me feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and um, this same thing at the end. Um, 145 he goes to the house rings the bell he's got the bullet it's wrapped in a little christmas you know in a little ribbon and he he gives it to uh luann he gives it to the daughter yeah, luann um you know says you know give this to your dad he'll know what it means as she's playing with it it is a um what do you Re call it 
Rian, Rian, Rian. Um, I'm like, who's Louie? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, who's that? That's what's the name of You know. Okay. <laughs> You know Luann. That's Rianne's <laughs> sis, twin sister. <laughs> that's, her, that's her stunt double. <laughs> you, you know Lou. You know Leanne. <laughs> I'm so dumb. <laughs> yeah. Oh, man. You got to say it like the old folks say. You know Leanne. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm trying to make you. Yeah, that's I gotta make you remember. You know Leanne. Don't make me get no switch. <laughs> but yeah, as she's as she's playing with it at um, uh, minute marker 145, oh. she's playing with it. Um, it is a uh, what do you call that? Uh, solid. It is a solid round. It's not a. It's not a hollow point. Um, you can you can clearly see the tip. You know, it's not a hollow point. Um, but yeah, I mean, you know, like I was saying, I no matter what, even with all the inconsistencies, from one scene to the next, you know, the little movie mistakes, they were there. They were I there. Can't help it. I like the incontinuities and stuff. I'd be like, mm hmm, you take a picture, you put stuff back. <laughs> One of the stockings was missing. I was like, mm hmm. <laughs> yeah, lots of lots of stuff there. You know, like you said, where they, you know, they're forcing they're forcing scenes and forcing shots. Um, you know, forcing to stay in camera kind of thing. Um, none of that stuff bothered me. None of it bothered me because. Yeah, the movie was good. The movie really pulled me in and made me watch. Yeah. I'm like, well, there were some really good pluses. Like, when they were uh, talking to the girl who killed herself, hers, his dad. I, was, I will not remember his name. I can't. Amanda Hunsaker. 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 Yeah. Hunsaker. The guy with the sack. Okay, so <laughs> when they were talking and the point of view that they had, I loved it. So when Riggs is down on the grass, and then you have Roger, and then you have Hacky Sack. <laughs> but he's like right behind him. That whole, <laughs> that whole <laughs> I'm not going to remember his name. That whole <laughs> scene right there, the way he's set up. I loved it. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> right where the age and the end with a sack was close. Oh, <laughs> Hacky sack is nowhere close. It's close. But I'll, but I'll give, I'll give it to you. That's like a, whose line it is. A, 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 whose line is it anyway? Yeah, you got five thousand points. You were close, but not. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we'll still remember. You remind me of Drax. Yeah. <laughs> Artillery batteries. That's nothing like what I said. <laughs> right? Oh my gosh. I love this. <laughs> you know he's in that show C. What's that? He's in that show C with uh, Mo um, Jason Momoa. Oh, yes. Who? Uh, yes. David Batista? David Batista. Yes. yes. Okay. I'm sorry, and I know this is so sidebar, but it's a movie. Do you, you don't remember how I would always say I wish Jason Momoa would play Lobo? I, you know what? I do not want to talk about DC right now. I am mad at the entire franchise. Let's not talk about that. Let's, Let's not. not that. Okay, I am mad James at the entire Stone. franchise. Um, they just killed their Wonder Woman three movie. They just killed um, the Batman movie. Batman, Superman. Yep, I'm, I I do not want to talk about DC. And in the future, just for future reference, just so you know, um, do not make DC movies a suggestion for us to review. I'm just saying. Okay. Wow. <laughs> I'm just saying. Well, you might as well take that anything and everything down. I'm gonna take that down because it's getting changed to get to the chat room. All right, <laughs> because we will not be reviewing everything, anything, and nothing about movies when it comes to DC. I'm no, 
I, I'm so done. I've been done with that franchise. So the Lethal Weapon, um, you know, two, <laughs> two, three, and four. Um, I loved, I loved the the flow of the movie and how they went. Even the the family became Riggs's family. Um, yeah. Like day one when he went over there. Yeah, like even from day from from movie one, you know, they get to the end, and he's just like, you know, like Junior was saying, that moment where he says, you know, if you think I'm gonna eat this, you know, the world's worst Christmas chicken, like you're crazy. Um, so when they when they connect and they become a family, um, and then seeing that all the way through to four, how they extended their family, um, the the scene that the scene that kind of. Uh, was funny for me was um Riggs and Leo Leo gets right um Joe Pesci yeah Joe Pesci what a what a awesome actor I gotta like, watch what a, all of these again okay <laughs> <laughs> what an awesome actor okay 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 yeah 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 okay yeah and he doesn't yeah okay 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 okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Um, because you know we needed our three questions. I, what character did you guys connect with the most? And Say again one more time. What character did you guys connect with the most? Because for me, it was Riggs, and I mean that because you know he's crazy, but not that. That's <laughs> because, his... no, because he's white. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's he's a white cop on the edge. What? I I didn't. <laughs> I immediately saw it. Like the second oh, I saw the movie, I was like, "Oh, that's Jay right there." <laughs> he's a white grungy cop. Dang <laughs> Jay, you gotta let him talk to you like that. <laughs> that's why I thought. That's why I saw the connection. That was you know. Oh my gosh! Don't be scared. No, nah, I'm just. <laughs> I'm just jealous with you, man. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Okay, 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 okay. Now go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. I connected with Riggs because Roger just seemed like my dad. He was just such a, he fit the dad perfectly. And I was like, oh, that's the dad. Him, I'm more like, you know me, I'm crazy, I'm fun, I'm what you want to do? Dare me? You dare me? <laughs> For me, it was um, his sense of might be a little TMI, but um, I know the feeling of when, you know, because grief is a very strong feeling, and you're like, in order to be with who you lost, you have to be yourself. You mean by that? Um, I understand that feeling, but for me, it was I could connect in that moment in that scene. Um, not exactly, but but. Well, um, I give you big hug. <laughs> big hug. <laughs> I could um, understand his feeling. For me, I could connect. Um, that was a problem. I can connect with. I think we've all had those days. It's not that serious. Yeah. Then, maybe so serious. I don't know. I really think for him it was. It had so much. The death of his wife, PTSD. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Right. Well, he had all of the characteristics, their behavior. Everyone. Because that was it. Watching it, uh, for me, I connected with, and this is an odd character to, to connect with, but um, I connected with Captain Murphy. Now, he doesn't <laughs> have scenes in this movie, but within the whole trilogy, he kind of reminds me of, like, uh, like, I don't know, the way I am now. Like, at work, you know, I'm a manager, I have a bunch of skilled technicians that work for me, and it's like, I know they could do a good job, but sometimes we have little fires that we got to put out, right? At work. Yeah. And I got to hold my, I got to keep myself together. And kind of like my, my best guys at work 
are the guys that give me the most aggravation. So my Murtaugh and my Rick at work drive me in the fuck. I need them, right? They're the best they're the best at their job. So I, I deal with it and I kind of take care of the stuff in the background and make sure everything, you know, I cover for them. So yeah. I do with uh, Captain Murphy over the series, right? In this, in Lethal Weapon 1, the first one, I would say, oddly enough, I relate to uh, Murtaugh more. Because, you know, I'm, I'm a dad, and I, I do the 9 to 5 gig kind of deal, right? And uh, my day is pretty consistent. It's the same. So you could, some would say it's pretty boring. Complacent, yeah. You no, know, complacent, but I'm okay with that, you know? Yeah. And I'm looking forward to retirement, necessarily, uh, like he was, but I could appreciate that he's kind of set in his ways, right? Like there's certain things I, I do now at work that I'm like, you know what? We don't need to change. I mean, we can change certain things, but I'm okay if we just do a steady progression. So I kind of related to a rigs there where I don't have that psycho friend or psycho partner that's going to be taking me on these crazy, you know, adventures and stuff like that, which is what rigs is, right? Rigs embodies that. I'm gonna I'm gonna dance the line of death, but I get the job done. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah he really like, he really down. pulled him out of his uh, comfort zone. Yeah, yeah, he really pulled him out of his comfort zone. Um, more practical, right? Rogers more practical. Where, um, you know, uh, Martin's more like you know he's willing to take that shot because you know kind of like the high risk reward kind of mentality. So, yeah. I'm very low. I had one. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Uh, all right. So my one last my character. Hold one. on. Let me get my character. Oh, oh, my character. Um, we're down to our we're down to our ten minutes. Um, <laughs> my my character, and I'm only saying this because I, I this is just the character I like. It had nothing to do with me connecting with anybody uh, on a personal level, um, because. They're fictional characters, um, but to me, uh, Leo gets. You know, Leo gets. Leo is, you know, th- throughout the the saga, throughout the franchise, um, he's he's just in a, he's just in a, he's just trying to make the best of the situation. You know, so when he starts stealing the money. He was just trying to make the best of his situation, and as he progresses with, uh, you know, Riggs and Murtaugh, he he does bond with them. He does have that bond, and he makes that connection with them. And then when you see it in the in the other movies, um, he does start taking it more personal because he's you know he's I'm selling your house, you know. We know personal things about each other. I'm no longer a witness. And here we are integrated in each other's lives on a personal level. So he starts taking it, you know, yeah, we're we're more than just friends. Like we're we're family. You know, and Leo sees that before the rest of them do. You know, okay. he really does see that before the rest of them. And and to me, it started when Riggs shows up for revenge. And saves Leo, and Leo thinks they showed up to save him. So in Leo's mind, Riggs and Murtaugh showed up to save his life and didn't know that Riggs was there for revenge. And that Murtaugh went... Yeah, and then Murtaugh shows up to help his partner, to back up his partner... But in in Leo's mind, Leo says, "You know, you guys, you guys came for me. You came for me, and you saved me." Like from to Leo, that was like a real personal moment for him, and uh, that was the character that I, I liked more than anybody throughout the franchise was uh, Leo Getz. Okay, so nobody from the first. Um, who's Leo? Who's Leo Getz? <laughs> I don't remember seeing Joe Pesci. He's in. He's in, in two, three. Okay. Two and three. Oh, two, three, and four. Now, oh, if we have yeah. to go, if we have to go from well, a character, if it has to be a specific character from one, um, oh, oh okay. I, I, I must admit that notes. I like. I like <laughs> Joshua. I like Mr. Joshua. 
<laughs> I like Mr. Joshua for the for the purpose of the soldier mentality. I I liked him a little bit more. I don't want to say I connected with him, um, but I did like the Joshua character um, in part one. Throughout the franchise, Leo gets. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I have one last degree with Leo Guest. Can I? I have one last thing. Whoa. You still looking at it? You still have it on your screen? Which is? If, if you go one, lethal weapon one. No, no. What's the what's the minute mark? <laughs> oh, the minute mark is. Bear with me. Give me a second. Even my glasses, I'm struggling right now. Can't even read my whole right. Um. Okay. What is it? Thirty-eight forty-four. It's either thirty-eight forty-four. Oh yeah, thirty-eight, thirty-eight thirty-one actually. So from thirty-eight thirty-one to thirty-eight forty-four, there's this car halfway out the road before they get to the car. Right? It's like why? Why is this car just sitting there? <laughs> Then they pass the car, the car starts to move, and then it just stops because I heard it go over the curb. <laughs> I was like, and you can see them kind of go over the curb, and then they just stop again. I was like, um, <laughs> I thought it was funny. Oh, okay. They're on top of the hill. Yeah, I see it. I see it. Hmm. I don't even see it move. You see it move? Oh, no, I see it's trying to move. Yeah, it, it, okay. Yeah. It, yep, then it moved. Okay. And then it kind of, like, does a little hip. Like, yeah. <laughs> like, who went over the curb? Nice. Yeah. Oh, did you want me to answer the questions, Rob? Um, I don't think I answered my question. I mean, it's pretty simple. About the ahead. audio and the music. Uh, go ahead. Yeah, so... Uh, I mean, it's obvious that it had a saxophone and guitar blues uh, theme throughout the whole movie. Um, the uh, They had a lot of Christmas songs in it, for sure. Uh, a couple songs that were... I written. didn't hear no Christmas song. Well, it opened up with Jingle Bell Rock, so... <laughs> and, uh, it wasn't as good as Jingle Jingle, whatever. <laughs> don't, don't, don't start. What? Don't start. What? What I will say, though, I thought that they creatively added Christmas music throughout different ways. So, like, Jingle Bells Rock was written exclusively for the movie. They had Deck the Halls uh, playing um, on the TV screen, the Bugs Bunny version, A Christmas Carol. They had Deck the Halls playing, which was kind of cool. And they just, and then they had the cops trying to sing, right? And they did their... The one, two, three, like we're gonna go on three. One, two, the cop third, you know? Yeah. Like that started it right there. And um, what else? Uh, they had, I mean, I thought it was mixed very well with the saxophone guitar. What I didn't know, I'd look it up, that um, that this, the saxophone player was, um, oh gosh, who was it? It was. Uh, David Sanborn, which is, I guess, a famous saxophone player, he's been in, he's done tremendous things in his career uh, in that role as a musician. The guitar player was Eric Clapton, nice. which was cool, and the composer was Michael Kamen, who is like known throughout the, I guess, movie industry in the eighties at least for uh, like what has he not done? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. But I will say that the one, the reason why I didn't score this. Before we get to our scores, I didn't give this a perfect 10, but a part of it was, even though I love the saxophone and I love the little sounds that were going on through the movie, um, it was kind of overplayed. Like, they, they, like if you really watch the movie and just think about the music, which is what I was doing, they, that, every, that's why you remember it. Like, think about it. That's why you remember the, like, you know, like, the, <laughs> remember all the little sounds. But they, it's almost like every emotion had a saxophone or guitar blues riff to kind of accentuate it. Right. So that it, it really sold when Riggs was depressed. They're playing that really low tone, you know, background music, you know, to show that he's really sad. And it, it right. worked. 
but they did it almost like every scene. Like there was almost like no time where there was no guitar, saxophone, or their their, their sound. I feel right? like for the first minute of him being sad, it was quiet. I, I noticed it. I was just like. Yeah. And I made a mental note to myself, like, wow, these are, like, the, the scenes that, like, get people, the ones when it's just super silent. Right, right. And that was the and thing. then I it starts the music. Yeah. yeah, I don't know if they had enough. I mean, they did. They, I mean, obviously, I love the movie, but I think that, I think they might have overdone the saxophone a little bit. But other than that, you know, everything else was, I mean, their, their audio was good. I mean, it was... You know, you could tell if it was of the time. There were some, there were some audio background noise that um, they probably could have filtered out. You know, um, there were some like you know graphic sounds and stuff like that going on in the background. But I just dismissed it as being, uh, you know, uh, realistic, right? Right. Yeah, I feel like right. it was part of the atmosphere. Mm-hmm. What's your score? Uh, I you know, I gave it a oh. nine out of ten, and. Um, but I will say that um, I grade pretty hard. So to get a 10 out of 10 for me, it's pretty tough. Um, you know, what, I mean, if I rewatch certain movies, like I might change my score for Jingle Jangle because, you know, uh, you made some good talking points. So that might score a 10, maybe. I- I'll think about it. <laughs> it's got a three. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, it was, um, it was, I think the whole movie was done very well. They closed out the movie with the Christmas um, song from Elvis, I'll Be Home for Christmas, which was like perfectly placed. Uh, although I will say that the Lethal Weapon song, the actual Lethal Weapon song, is horrible. It's horrible. <laughs> yeah. so if you watch the credits, you'll hear the Lethal Weapon sound like the main song for the movie, and yeah. it's horrible. Yeah. It's horrible. <laughs> but you know, it worked for us horrible. back then. So it's just like <laughs> he's gonna he's gonna he's emphasize gonna... that one more time. Are you ready? Horrible. <laughs> horrible. <laughs> I wrote that on here. Horrible. Did you? In big giant letters. Horrible. <laughs> and what's bad is the album released on my birthday. That's just crazy. I'm like, this is a horrible album, and they released it on my birthday. That's terrible. I can't. Jay said he gives it an eight because nothing's okay. perfect. <laughs> well, I beg to differ. <laughs> return, you know, like, I give it a return of the Living Dead is a ten out of ten. Like that's a yeah. just awesome, awesome movie right there. You know, oh. that's in my top three with Jaws, <laughs> Jaws, Wraith. Oh, yeah. you still actually watch Jaws? Even hey, even though Jaws is giving me many, 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 many nightmares, um, still the best movie ever. Wraith with Charlie Sheen, still the best movie ever. Um, but ten out of ten, Return of the Living Dead. <laughs> wow. Uh, okay, Ren- Renetta. <laughs> Just, just because I, I just had to say something because Junior's like, uh, you know, there's no such thing, ten out of ten, and then Jay with the whole, there's no perfect, yeah, there is a perfect movie, dude. And you just, <laughs> you just haven't watched it yet. He's That's like, Let all. Me elaborate. <laughs> you just haven't watched the perfect movie, youngling. <laughs> oh my goodness. Uh, I, I, I give it a nine because I like the action. I love the action. Uh, I love the growth, especially between the characters. That was my best part. I like to see the connectivity. I like to see how the storyline connects everyone. Because if it doesn't, I'm like, I can't watch the movie. I have, I struggle. You know, it's like I get to a part and then I got to pause and then act like it's a whole nother movie when I come back. Yeah. Because it's the only way to get back in. But this had a really good flow. And... Even the the mom, you know, even though she didn't have big parts, she stood out. You know what I mean? You know, you have some people in the background, like old girl <laughs> from uh, the the uh, Ash. Oh my gosh! You know what I'm talking about? We watched it. Um, 
You said you said Ash as in Evil Dead. Yeah, thank you. I was like, <laughs> all these deads are going in my head. I'm like, that's not the right one. Pew, pew, pew. <laughs> I know. Right? <laughs> I'm just gonna go jump off the balcony. <laughs> <laughs> it was like uh, I can't remember her name, but old girl was always in the background. I'm like, is she gonna say anything? I'm like, why is she there? Who is she? <laughs> it was perfect. And then she got mad. It's all your fault. It's been fun with you. But yeah, I think she stood out. Everybody everybody worked out really well. And I think I was glad to see Gary Busey, you know, healthy. Yeah. Before he was a little nostalgic. Yeah. He got crazy. Okay. Um I'm gonna have to I'm gonna have to agree with you guys. Um I'm stuck floating between seven and eight on this one. Um but I, I, I'm leaning more towards an eight. So I'm gonna I'm just gonna go ahead and say eight stars. I give it eight stars. Um, you know, like Junior said, from you know, the movie had its own soundtrack, which is which is a plus, you know. Um the scenes you know, with the, uh, the music played into the emotions of the scene, um, which is to me that's a plus. Is that you didn't just take somebody else's music and play it in the background? You know, it's you know kind of like Jaws and Star Wars, you know, movies like that where they incorporate their own soundtrack and um, use the music to uh, help paint the picture, kind of thing. Um, that that's big for me. You know, that's big for me. So I uh, definitely have to lean towards the eight. Uh, I'm going to give this a eight out of ten. Really loved it. Loved the franchise. Uh, and uh, we know Leo gets. Yeah. <laughs> okay. 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 I just, I just we love, I, I just, I just love Joe Pesci. So, I mean, any, I know, I he miss is, him being in Mooch. Yeah, he's hilarious. So, it's like, no matter what he does, I'm just like, I'm a fan. But I, re- I really liked um, Mr. Joshua in this movie. Uh, I liked the way the movie flowed. And like we said earlier, no matter the con- inconsistencies, no matter the flaws, the movie still was put together well. It's still, a- still a good movie. To this day, it's still a good movie. Um... So, definitely eight out of ten. Loving it. Definitely recommend it for everybody to watch. A must watch. Yeah, especially you youngins. You see how real movies are made. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the movie, the movie Not all the CGI. But let me ask you guys a question. If you noticed this, have you noticed? Okay, let's backtrack for a second. You remember the Brat Pack, right? Mm-hmm. Why is there no Brat Pack these days? It's like you still have our generation and older still mm-hmm. doing movies. I'm just like, so there's nobody young good enough to start, you know, taking place because that's what always happens or happened in the past. Well, you know, now I'm just like, I, and I'm not bad about it. You, you kind of had that a little bit. I think the last generation of, of I hate to say brat pack, but you kind of had certain people like you had Adam Sandler, right? Adam Sandler's. Uh, Billy Madison Studios, like all of his movies had their version of a Brat Pack, right? Yeah. He had a lot of the same actors playing in a lot of his movies. Yeah. Quentin Tarantino's another one. He had a lot of his movies had a group of actors, so you could kind of argue that that's their Brat Pack, right? Yeah. But well, I I think the '80s kicked off an era where, and well, actually generationally i mean back in like what like i think it was like the 50s and 60s or maybe even before that they had frank sinatra sammy davis dean martin like they had those guys right but i think that they were the original brat packs yeah the original right and then you have like uh when you get into like the breakfast club era right i think that those actors were so young it was like i think that in the 80s they were at a time when that kind of allowed that to it, it worked out well you had a lot of young actors coming together that nobody really knew but they were popping up in all these these movies that were well written movies right and then now you have movies that are either reboots or there's nothing original so a lot of characters you have now actors you have now 
they can't establish that brat pack mentality because they're, you know, they're almost trying to, they're almost living for themselves. Yeah, they're not coming up with their own stuff. So it's like, you know, can they establish that, right? Like, they redid 16 Candles. That would be awful, right? Yeah. And it wouldn't make sense. I don't know. I mean, certain movies that were done in the past that I think they should just be in the past. Just, it's okay. Like, don't reboot Leave the Weapon. Don't right. reboot the matrix don't reboot too late, it's about too late. They had to do it. yeah too late they they did uh reboot lethal weapon with the tv show yeah but i mean that's a tv show that's different i'm talking about movies you know mm, so yeah. yeah but um it's like, yeah, it's, I, I, I just don't think that i don't know if they'll have that anymore because i mean look at you got the twilight cast look at the twilight cast you know, like those. Well, I think what I really meant was the fact that the Brat Pack, they were so. In the film industry, you have your film family. Not everybody shares the same film family. They were a film family. So that's what I meant, like the Brat Pack. That was one of the other reasons why they were called the Brat Pack. Okay. They were, they were I, friends outside of that. Yeah, I, I think um, I think that might be more of a director. Yeah, I think it's built around the sector. Yeah, because you know the way the way uh, Tim Burton always works with Johnny Depp, Johnny Depp and his people. You yeah. know what I mean, kind of thing. And, it, and it's like you know, um, you know, oh, you want me to do a movie? Sure, let me call Johnny Depp. And it's just like, wait a minute, you didn't even know what the movie is. And he's like, I don't know, I don't care. And then yeah. when Johnny yeah. Depp gets that phone call, does he say, you know, who's directing it? And, you know, they're like Tim Burton. He's like, yeah, I'm on. Like, dude, you don't even know what the movie is. He's like, yeah, I don't care. I'm on. It's Tim Burton. You know, so I, I wonder, if, you know, but a lot of um, um, casting, I I, I want to say that uh, the casting for nowadays is probably done the exact same way it was done in the 80s and in, in the in the 90s. Like, it was just like who's hot right now kind of thing, yeah. you know, I think which is terrible, like you know, which is terrible because the, the Twilight girl, uh, that was, who's the, the girl from the Twilight? I, I hated her throughout that entire Twilight saga. I'm, <laughs> oh, I'm, oh, I know who you're talking about. I'm, you know, I, I hate to admit that I even watched the, the whole franchise, but, um, I, yeah, ha- I wouldn't tell a lot of people that, man. Yeah. And well, I just I, I just realized we're still recording. <laughs> I realize we're just still recording. <laughs> okay. I'm like, let it go. Let it go. Okay. Um. So I, I watched the Twilight, you know, franchise. I don't like her. I don't like her character. I don't really know who her, what her name is. But she does this other movie with the uh, whole mirror, mirror on the wall thing. Um, the Huntsman? Right? Oh yeah, the Huntsman. Yeah, I thought you were gonna say Oculus. I was like, what again, <laughs> I I didn't like her. I didn't like her character. I didn't like her. I don't think she sells it. I don't think she is a good actress. I don't think she brings anything to the scene. Um, she doesn't sell a scene. You know, whatever scene she's in, she she doesn't sell it. So I mean, it's one of those things where it's just like, oh, you know. Christina Ritchie, she's hot right now. You know, we kind of like, uh, 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 what's his name? From Zoolander. Uh, <laughs> Mugatu. You know what I mean? It's just like, yeah, he's so hot right now. <laughs> yeah. It's one of, it's one of well, those things when it comes to casting. Cool. You know, it's when it, when it comes to casting, it's just one of those things. It's just like, yeah, you know, oh yeah, so-and-so, they're so hot right now. I'm not talking about casting. It's like, okay, I had a film family when I was working on a film. What you doing? You need a ride? Yeah, I need a ride. I'm like, okay, there's this part. Word? Okay, let's go. Even if we didn't, we knew that we were going to work with each other at some point. You know, it's kind of like, hey, I got this thing I need you to do. Can you do makeup? Can, can, you know, can, you, can you build this? And it's people that we know. We're networking, you know, and then we become close. You know, it's, those are our go-to people. That's that's our film family. You know, so oh, you, you meant behind the scenes. Yes, yes. <laughs> You're fine. Not not characters. 
<laughs> we just we just went on for like the last 14 minutes not knowing what know, you're talking about like, <laughs> like, trying not to interrupt you like okay i'm just i'm just gonna let him go let him just... <laughs> 14 okay. minutes later yeah okay okay okay. okay 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 <laughs> okay 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 about... <laughs> that is gonna be in my brain for the whole rest of the day Okay, okay. <laughs> All right. Icy little one. All right. Okay, so what's the next Speaking film we're going to I have to go pick up my dogs because they're getting their hair cut now. I just got a phone call. So All right. I so, um, yeah, let's wrap this up. And um, we'll meet back here. Um, what's good? Tomorrow or Tuesday? Either is fine. Tuesday is fine. Tuesday? Tuesday is good. All right, so we'll do our oh, usual on Tuesday. What's Tuesday? Um, what's Eight. the date? Hold on. I do not have that. 8 p.m. <laughs> yeah. No. Yep, uh, that's not a problem. I'm just going to check my calendar. I'm pretty sure that's not a problem. And what's our next movie? Let's see. All right, so we're talking about Tuesday the 13th. Yeah, that's not a problem. And what's our next movie? Um, we'll figure it out Tuesday, but I think um, the next movie should be The Nightmare Before Christmas, if I'm not mistaken. Um, yeah. Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm going to sing a lot. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it is. Nightmare Before Christmas. All right. Um, where are you your plugs? <laughs> yeah. Where did you guys find... Um... Uh, Secret Santa. Where is that? Where can I get that? Oh, Secret Santa. So it should be on. You know what? Let me confirm where I can find it, and then I will tell you where it is because I think it might be on Tubi. But it's there. <laughs> it's somewhere. It's okay. on one of my. It's on one of the streamings. But okay. yeah, it's there. All right, I'll, I'll check uh, Tubi. 2017. Where to watch options. Um, right now, YouTube, Google, Amazon. You know. So we'll have to we'll have to look into it and see where uh, where we can find it. Is it a, is it a pay or is it free? It's free. Oh, okay. Secret. I honestly think it's on Tubi. I think that's where I find. If it's not, it is a horror movie, right? Because uh, the yes, it's 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 here. it's a black comedy. Okay. It's dark and funny at the same time. So I know how you like funny stuff. Yeah, because <laughs> so, there's a 2021 Secret Santa film. Wait, it's a comedy? I thought it was a horror. I thought it was What's a horror. The, tell, me, tell me some of the names that are in it. Secret Santa. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you lucky you <laughs> way over there. <laughs> They didn't okay. even share your blueberry muffin. Um, Secret Santa. Uh, Are we talking? I know it's not. It's not 20... an old school movie. Came out in 2018. Horror. Yeah. Horror movie. Yeah. All right, I don't see a lot of. Yeah, it's, it's a horror comedy. It's a black comedy. It's a comedy. It's a black comedy. Yes. I know. Okay. <laughs> when you say black comedy, mean like Soul Plane, like it's a whole cast of blacks, black people. <laughs> Dark comedy. Black dark, comedy. Oh, dark, oh. dark comedy. Okay, you're going to have to yeah, send so us a link. Up, they always say black comedy. All right, you're going to have to send us a link because the Secret Santa that I see is horror. Yeah. All I see is a horror okay. movie, Secret Santa, and then a romantic comedy, 2021, Secret Santa. No, it's not romantic, but what's who's in the horror? Can you tell me at least like four, four characters? Um... Uh, I can tell you right now, it's um, uh, it's got uh, Michael Raddy, Drew yeah, Lynch, and Deborah Sullivan. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a horror. Oh, Michael Raddy. Okay, I know this guy. All right. Okay. Yeah. So. Yeah, he's so funny in it. <laughs> All right. Note to self: dark comedy means B-rated, bad version okay. of a horror movie. Gotcha. 
That is not swearing. Got gotcha. you. Got it. Got it. Well, just because you didn't like jingle jangle, don't get on me. Because it sucked. Oh, you converted that was change. That was. <laughs> See. It still sucks. Movie. My psychiatrist says I need to open myself up to new things. So. Oh, I have a psychiatrist now because I saw Jingle Jangle. Yeah. So, you know. <laughs> Just yeah. so you know. That. I can't stand the boys. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Evil. Later, guys. See you guys on Tuesday. Take care.